Yes. Yes, Nupul. Shall we start? Yes, Yogesh. Okay. Thank you, Nupul. Uh, good evening to all of you and welcome to this session. Uh, you must be noticing something down there. Etiquette and student behavior guidelines at Masai School. Looks very formal. Yes, it is formal. So before we start, can you just quickly type on the chat box? Uh, I would like to know which are the batches that are here, which are the cohort. Yes, just write the batch name, Spartans, Phoenix, Samurai. Okay, largely Samurai as of now. Spartans, Titans. Okay, good. I think across all batches are here. Great. So uh, good evening and welcome to this session. Uh, Shruti and me have put together this content for you and largely I'll be delivering, but later on Shruti will help you to clarify any questions, any doubts that you have around this topic called etiquette. Sometimes it is a bit of a tongue twisting also, right? So we will talk about it as we move forward. So let's start uh, with uh, what is the background? You know, something very interesting happened. I wrote this to Albert, Aman, Ankur, Rupul and Lloyd uh, on the Slack channel. Please share your experience where student did not adhere uh, to etiquettes. Look forward to receiving one or two instances from your experience. So I wanted some inputs from them. And uh, I thought I'll, it'll take some time uh, to get some responses. You know what happened? I started getting messages after messages from Albert, Aman and Ankur without sharing uh, your names, I will share some of the instances what they felt. So one of the instructor wrote, during the class messaging others in the Slack room, in the Slack or Zoom, using profane language during the class, talking over the phone during the class, going on a break during the class without asking the instructor or an IA, not responding to IA instructor, not responding when the question is asked, not responding to team on the Slack channel, talking bad about a fellow student, demanding that project team that is something that you are comfortable with, right? It is like going to a hotel and say that I need a comfortable room to stay, not informing about late submissions, dropping off the class, not contributing to the project or informing the project team members, expecting team to respond beyond 11 p.m. I thought that is the last call, but somebody said I get also messages at 2 a.m. in the morning. Come on guys, they're also human beings. They have been working for 18 months on the trot without a break. Helping someone with code and answer, expecting instructors to connect, resolve problems, not ready to listen. This is something very interesting I got. Using a team member's name without permission, where in which they say that A is very happy with my performance and he said I'm very good at it, though he has not been told. Abruptly interrupting the class, not even waiting for a few minutes and allowing the instructor to finish, start asking questions. There was one instance where Nupul did something uh, on the class and immediately the answers. Questioning the placement team by claiming that we are not sharing profiles. Student approaches placement team with absurd request, reaching out to different team members, copying code during the interviews, copying code from Google during the interviews, missing an interview without any permission. I think then I said that, the form is closed. I didn't want, I didn't allow Albert, Rupul and Aman to fill any further because it's going to, the list is going to uh, 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 go longer, right? So what I did was, I, 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 I just uh, thought that we should have a session. I would like to start with this quote, which says that we are what we repeatedly we do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. I think this is a very powerful quote it was not said today, 2000 years ago by Aristotle, a Greek philosopher. Read it again very slowly. We are what we repeatedly do. What is it that you do on a regular basis is what we are. So if you see somebody ex exceedingly well writing a code, someone who's dressed appropriately, someone who shows politeness and courtesiness, it is not an act, but a habit. The key word is habit. Now, how do we form habits? Now, our belief is good habits make great careers. You all know that you have joined Maasai School so that you have great careers. We are sure all of you get jobs. But we are happy and we will be very happy if you make a great career out of it. Right? What is a career? Career is what you and me work for 30, 35, 40 years. Most of you are in early 20s. 
you will be working till 55 60 stop dreaming of having a vacation by 35 and being in goa or bali unlikely to happen ask me i'm almost 46 now i also dreamt that in 35 40 i will retire and i'll, I'll enjoy it unlikely to happen right good habits make great careers so develop these habits at very early stage in your professional life it is even better if you can start during your college life but most of you are in the transition period so it's a great opportunity to learn these habits at masai school i think i've shown this this is my favorite pic which depicts what masai school is all about here is a set of students and they have an aspiration it could be a job it could be a career it could be a tech stack but unfortunately there is a huge gap and because of which you are not able to go there unless you are Hussein, Carl, uh, you know, Carl Lewis or Hussein Bolt, you can jump from A to B, but you need some platform. This is what Maasai School is offering you. And that is Albert, that is Aman, that is Rupul, and that is uh, Shruti, that is Maitri. All of us are there to support you, right? For you to move. As I told you, the walking is going to be done by you. The climbing is going to be done by you. We are here to coach. We are here to mentor. We are here to motivate but the effort needs to be put by you. So let's look at what is it that we need to do. I'm going to talk about keeping these in background, etiquette and student behavior at Masai School. Now, before we go forward, let's look at what is this word etiquette is all about. Now, before that, you are expected to act in a mature manner. During this journey here, you are expected to act in a mature manner because you're transitioning from a campus to a corporate. Most of you were in colleges, we call it as campus. You are transitioning to a corporate, and Maasai School is a platform. So we expect you to behave maturely with respect to learning, the way you interact with instructors and fellow students. Just because all of us are very friendly, just because we allow you to call by our names, that doesn't mean that you don't act in a professional manner. That doesn't mean that you don't show courtesies, that doesn't mean that you don't show respect. These are the ground rules on which your habits are built upon it. Okay, so faculty members, the coaches, the IAs have the authority to manage their classroom to ensure there is an environment for conducive to learning. It is not just about getting you all the students in one room and then say, let's the session starts. It doesn't happen like that. There needs to be an environment on which the class is taken. So let's look at this word, what is etiquette? Now, the word etiquette is actually a French word, right? The origins are way back in the early 16th century. You know, French are very much concerned about uh, the way one person should behave in a society, in a, in, a, in a gathering. So outside any gathering, they used to place one kind of a, a, a placard, which says that if you have to enter this place, you're supposed to dress this way, you're supposed to behave in such manner, uh, that is what they termed it as an etiquette. Now, for a long period of time, this word was not used until it became popular in the corporate circle. And that is where they used corporate etiquettes. So largely, there are two kinds of etiquette. One is a social etiquette. I think in, your, in our society, it is marked by courtesy, right? You are not expected to cross your leg and sit in front of your elders. And, and if you're shaking it, you, you had it even more. You expect the elders to sit first before you do that. Thank you. You are not supposed to raise your voice. All these are basic social etiquettes. I'm sure your family must have thought about it. Same thing holds good even in the corporate life, right? Of course, in corporate, it is marked by hierarchy. And that is what we are helping you to understand why this is required here. Now, why we are talking about this today is because the world has changed from this. I want you to observe this image very closely. Some of you who have attended my collaboration uh, session know this, but you, I want you to watch this very closely for 10 seconds. The world has moved from this to this. From this to this. I'm sure you got the message by now. We have moved from this to this. So it is a very highly interconnected world. Look at, at Masai school itself. Somebody is in Bangalore, somebody is in Chennai, somebody is in Auli. I keep talking about Auli because uh, that is where uh, Keshav Mahar, Mahar, who's from the previous Apache batch, he sits now and works. 
can you imagine in uttarakhand an auli sits there and he is working for something to be developed by share chat in bangalore koramangala the world is completely interconnected people are working from their homes in fact very interesting for the first time i saw uh, a, a report came to me the screen time apple has sent me a report saying that your screen time has increased by 8% i said amazing so it looks like that we are spending more time online than in person or in the corporate environment that is why this word came up called netiquette now what is this word netiquette is all about is net and etiquette it refers to courtesy and politeness when communicating with others online most of you i have not interacted with you in person but i am interacting with you online so we expect certain courtesies and certain politeness when communicating with others in online now can i get a quick confirmation on the chat box you are in line with me what i am discussing here yes okay fantastic so in the next 30 minutes i'm going to give you an overview this entire document is recorded it is available i'll give you a youtube link plus also i'm going to make you a pdf out of it shruti is going to help you uh, in implementing this all this if you need any further information we are there to help you so in the next 20 to 30 minutes i'm going to take you through what are the few things you can take care of it there are thousands of things obviously i don't we don't have that time but if you take care of this largely 20 30 elements uh, your etiquette would be at a level which is acceptable right so we're going to talk about two areas what is the etiquette to be very specifically netiquette that you have to exhibit during the class and what is the netiquette that you have to exhibit using zoom slack and email not just within masai school but also to the external world the moment that you are coming closer to the placement you will start interacting with the external world what are the kind of etiquettes that you need to demonstrate when you are talking to the hr of an another company the impact is even higher now i don't mind if somebody writes to me in caps though i feel bad about it then i'll say it's fine i know that our students come from different background i'm the entire team at masai we are completely cognizant that most of our student come from tier 2 3 cities most of you come from vernacular background in your high school we completely know that but that does not an excuse to behave this way these are all learnable all are learnable friends whatever i am saying here it is all learnable provided that you develop a mindset that i need to be professional if you have that you can learn it okay so we are aware that the 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 the, the background that you are coming from that is not an excuse at all okay if you want to move forward you need to learn this in a nice way so let's move forward before uh, anything so there are a lot of things so what me and shruti did was instead of giving it to you uh, uh, into into some bullet points and into some tables we made it easy for you to remember as a b c of netiquette so i'm going to start with a b c d e f like that i've tried to get as much as close to 20 out of 26 alphabets okay let's start with the first one what is a can somebody guess what could be a what could be a what could be a a word starts with a attendance <laughs> noble i love this attendance and attitude okay i'll give it a is always what is the first netiquette or etiquette of always always go through the pre recorded sessions before you come for the daily record daily sessions it is a must it is a basic etiquette the second always is please be available 5 minutes before the session commencement even today if you see that drupal had to personally send a reminder at channel please join why is it it is so difficult for us to be few minutes early i it's a it's it's really a, a big question for me why it is because being fashionable being late is fashionable in our culture now i have told you many times if somebody invites you uh, for a dinner at 7:30 you are expected to go only at 8 o'clock if you are there at 7:30 even the guest is shocked up again but he was thinking you you say 7:30 you will come at 8 right but but it doesn't work right please come few minutes ahead of the session settle down get into the zone listen to some music it's very important why is it that we need to send it 
You know, one of the reasons that we have nine o'clock scrum is to get you into this habit. But unfortunately, many people still log in late and log in classes very late. Please change it for your betterment. Always check internet connection, power, infrastructure, position yourself in a well-lit room. When, when, when sometimes I ask you to switch on the camera, I see that it's completely dark. It can't be that way, right? And, and body language is seen. So make sure it is in a well-lit room. Always mute audio and turn off your video. Unless it is asked to turn on the video. How many times people join with the audio on? We can hear your conversation with the family. Even today, when we ran the samurai session for the NBFC onboarding, we could hear you talking to the family. Imagine that, will you do that? It is like opening your house door to everyone and hearing the private conversation. Why can't you keep it as a default setting? In Zoom, there is a default setting to mute both your audio and video. So that even by mistake, if you log in, if you forget it, it is there. And unmute only when it is required. If you see that whatever I have shared with you, it is not rocket science. But unfortunately, we don't do it. Right? This B is, so I've covered A. So let's move to B. B is respectful. Be careful with humor and sarcasm. Extra care while using emojis. I know because of this, guy, we got used to emojis, right? For somehow that without emojis, the sentence is incomplete. Not required. In a professional environment, use emojis only if it is absolutely necessary. Please understand the way you use Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat is different than the way you use your Slack, Slack email, and Zoom. So be careful of the humor and sarcasm. Unfortunately, there was a student who was asked to leave because he probably he, he did it in whatever the spirit it is, but it is not acceptable. And sometimes I've seen that be respectful of others' opinion when they differ from you. There is a difference between debating and discussing. In a debate, what happens is I am right, you are wrong. I'm sure you would have seen it happening in our TV channels, right? It is debating. Debating doesn't help you in learning. Discussing helps you in learning. If you have a difference of opinion, have a discussion. What is first fundamental for discussing is opening your ears and mind to listen what the other party is saying. When you are in debate, you shut this, you close this, only you, you keep doing this, right? So be respectful no, in a, in a non-critical way. Do not make personal or insulting remarks. Be respectful and adhere to decorum when you're dealing with IAs, instructors, coaches, code, code talk, guest lectures. I, I told you right in the beginning, all of them are friendly. That doesn't mean that you interact the way you interact with your friends. There has to be a line drawn. Right? So that is where your professionalism will get built. Same true with your offices also. Never use all caps. I'm going to talk about it in the email a little later. People are so comfortable in typing all caps. All caps means shouting. On top of it, if you use the red color, gone. Right? No exclamation marks. Read everything before sending. People even don't even read it. People are forming impressions with everything, every time you type, just like people are forming impression every time you speak. So let's move from B. And uh, one rule in online is very simple. If what I would not say in person to somebody, you have no way that you can do it on online. Some of people think that this is more casual in nature. It is equal as good as saying in person. In fact, it is even more danger in online because whatever you write, it is recorded and it is always there, right? And nothing is private. I can just copy this and send it to anyone and say, look, this is what that guy is saying. Whereas in in-person, I may not do the actual recording. So be careful if you're doing anything in online. What about C? Courtesy. Courtesy goes a long way in any setting, including online classroom. Please use your real name. Stop using uh, I am 10x coder. I am... 
I, I do get really, really interesting email IDs and names when in the admission cycle. What? Uh, uh, Django, Django. So they may be very cool in your school, in your college days, in your, in your friend circle. Here you are being, your perceptions are being formed. Keep it as close as possible to your name, right? I know that it would be difficult, but if you figure it out, you will be able to get it. Use more of please and thank you, right? Please, thank you, sorry. These are the most beautiful words we can use as much as required, but we often, we don't use it. Address instructor and faculty in a respectful manner. That's about courtesies. This is something that is very difficult in today's context when you have 360 degrees distraction. Before session begins, eliminate the environment for distraction. Minimize the background noise, turn off the TV and music, turn off your cell phones. And that is what one of the instructor wrote to me, Yogesh, I'm having a class. He's not even unmuted. He's taking on a call, right? So no multitasking, please. Don't post or share inappropriate material. Nothing true is private on online. So D is something that you need to take care. Every student is expected to be present for all sessions. There are some set of students are figuring it out. Nine names, crumb, then I scoot. It is like, you know, in the government offices, what they do is they come, they sign the attendance, they put their uh, uh, coat on the, on the chair. And if anybody asks, yeah, he's somewhere here, he's coming. Maybe he's gone for tea. It doesn't work here. On the Slack, Drupal has told 100 times, you need to update your status. If you are going out for whatever reason, you need to mention that I'm away for 15 minutes. You're not expected to do, but if you have completed your assignment, it's okay. You can step out for 15, 20 minutes. You need to catch up something, but you need to update your status, right? During evaluation, make sure you abide by instructor every very clearly. No to plagiarism. You know that both the code giver and the code receiver is treated. And uh, we have robust mechanism to test this. There's another big challenge in online, which you need to overcome is being your full and focused attention. In a classroom, you're bound to do that. Maybe mentally you may be absent, but physically you are there. But here what happens is you tend to get distracted. You switch on, log in, turn around and start looking at maybe a TV, start looking at your, uh, your mobile, or maybe in another screen, you do something. Remember, friends, I've been talking about it. Efforts is critical in Maasai school. Efforts in right quantity, right quality, and right direction. It is 996 is only quantity. It's very important, but that doesn't guarantee success. The second Q is quality. And to be quality, you must be, have a focused attention. Focus is key for quality, right? So make sure that you are focused and get away from that 360 degree attract, distraction. So one way you can do is maintaining the eye contact on the screen when the less session is happening, rather than looking somewhere, having a proper desk and a chair so that your body language is appropriate and take down notes. I know in today's digital world, taking down notes is somewhat, but let me tell you most uh, professional, uh, professional take down notes, however good they are, Right? So take down notes is very useful. Grammar and spelling matter. Matter a lot. It, see, it is not... See, when somebody sends something and there are grammatical errors and spelling errors, it is not that you don't know English. What the other person feels is you don't care. You don't care to correct. Because in today's context, typing like this could be great. GR8 for your friends but not in professional environment. No, please don't do that, right? It is always better to write it in full and use Grammarly. And today you have a tool for that also, right? Sometimes I get so used to Grammarly. Sometimes Grammarly makes a, a correction which is inappropriate and I further I go. So make sure you read it. Please honor your deadlines. Why is it that we need to follow up to fill up the forms? Why is it an instructor has to call up the IAS to say that you have not submitted? Why Sumit has to give an extension? Why? Why is it required? Delayed submission is not acceptable. On time is very important. I think this is where, you know, uh, Sid was explaining. Sid uh, 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 studied, uh, did his undergrad in uh, Massachusetts. 
and he says when the professor give a deadline 11:59 23:59 it is 23:59 it is not 24 so somehow if you start inculcating this habits you will not start giving excuses you plan for it unfortunately we keep doing it till 23:58 and 59 some error happens and this is something many people don't do you don't inform your ias you don't inform your instructors you don't inform your operation team we have to call and find out kidhar hai bhai kya ho gaya in this connected world how much time does it take to send a message you have a way to send it on a slack you have discipline at masai school operations at masai school you have instructors you have slack messages you have n number of ways to reach out to us but people don't do it again this is this is completely being disrespectful for the system if you have a challenge if you're taking off unwell please message it right in fact we had a rule when we had a campus in bangalore and rupul told on day 1 unless you are hospitalized and you are in you are on the bed and you can't the nurse has taken away your phone i expect you to update me if you are not coming right you are connected even if you are so bad ask somebody to send a message right so that at least we can know that why you have not attended so please do this and these are good habits remember good habits make great careers you are with us for 6 months 7 months but what we are teaching you if you learn the dividends are for life long okay this is something very close to me this is something about nothing but enjoying you must enjoy what you are doing right this goes back to the story of honda i worked with honda all meetings start with the story of joy shared by the founder shiroshi honda he said there are three joys in honda joy of making joy of selling and joy of driving people in the factory must have the joy of making cars people in the showroom should have the joy of selling this vehicle to the customer and the customer should enjoy reading so similarly at masai school we expect you to enjoy this learning enjoy what you are building actually you are building right it is not something a knowledge that you learn and you don't build look at the amazing projects that you showcased on saturday it was wonderful to see uh, people making pixel perfect in fact i was having a chat with pratik uh, yesterday because i had not attended your presentation on saturday i was busy with something else i asked pratik how was the presentation he said wonderful yogesh so amazing to see uh, our kids our students doing this amazing build it is only possible if you enjoy building joy of solving I asked Aman what is important to be good in data structures and algorithm. He said the student must enjoy solving. I think it's brilliantly put. If I don't enjoy solving, if I see that solving data structure as ah, you will never approach it that way. And joy of progressing from sprint to unit to getting jobs to moving up the pyramid from SDE one to SDE two to team lead to I want you want to see all of you being the CTOs. or the co-founders of the company and being very successful in your career right so please enjoy enjoy what you are doing then 996 kya in fact people will stay stop take rest at your family so start enjoy this is something that nupul keeps saying people don't use lms effectively submissions and attendance even the other day when maitri and uh, isha were checking some of the files were not opening we have told how to rename how to name the file uh when you do a zoom recording how to send it out again people are not using it note taking i have already covered the p stands for presence and participation students must contribute in the conversation it depends on the style of the instructor now if the instructor asking you to participate in the chat box participate but some instructors feels that i want to deliver it the chat can be a distraction i think you must you must respect it because not every session is done the same way right maybe in a soft skill session it is fine to interact it, i don't get distracted but when somebody is coding some serious stuff a chat can be a distraction so basis the way the instructor is saying please adhere to it and participate completely avoid commenting unnecessarily in the comment section what is not required please don't do it okay 
that's about that and the s is for submitting please submit the right way i have covered i'm going to cover in a moment usage of slack and zoom and covered in detail and the last one probably people take it for granted because they are in online people not wearing proper attire attire is nothing but clothing i'm not expecting you to wear very formal clothes i am not expecting you to wear uh, something exactly matching uh, uh, to be you know the way you would have gone to a corporate office i am expecting you to be presentable and professional if someone says i want to have a conversation with you with the video on you should be feel comfortable to switch on the video right keep the rule in mind that any time i'll be asked to switch on the video i have seen some students being dressed inappropriately i have seen students wearing night dress a immodest clothing not acceptable not acceptable please take care professionalism starts from scratch wearing proper attire is very very important if you don't value yourself how do you expect others to value i am not asking you to wear expensive clothes wear some basic clothes but whatever is acceptable and dress appropriately please now i had i found this on the net i want to share with you you may think working in code coding is cool i can come in shorts i can come the way i want yeah perfectly fine but first you arrive there right now this is this is when zuckerberg arrived in hoodies and this is what the comment it was made mark of immaturity today if we go in shorts doesn't matter because he has arrived or you get an admission into harvard and drop out and creates something like facebook when your reputation precedes you know the way you go it doesn't matter but you and me are a common man as of now so let's not get all these unwanted unnecessarily attire stuff in our way right prove it for yourself then do whatever you want so this is something that we can do very easily i don't know how many of you know you must go and look at steve jobs uh, initial uh, grooming he was dressed like a banker what do you mean by a banker is always pin striped suits with a tie clean shaven go and look at it today you may see him on we were, we have seen him on the stage wearing always black turtle neck and a black jean or a blue jean whatever he was to wear but did you know he was the most formal guy when he had to prove himself so we all get you know you we only see the tip of the iceberg hey uh, people in google and uh, uh, facebook it's okay you can come the way you want it's fine but first you arrive there and then do whatever you want okay so let's move forward it's already half an hour uh, 530 now i need to complete it so let's look at it few guidelines i'm going to give you on slack zoom and email so let's start with slack so before we start with uh, zoom i just want to give you some general guidelines make sure you mention your correct name update your professional photo this is not facebook or instagram make sure you are available on slack during the training hours update the status if required use slack or zoom whichever is appropriate necessarily do not share codes and submit assignments on slack prompt responses whenever you initiate a conversation make sure you start and end the conversation check the availability of the person before you start the conversation please do not ping anybody unnecessarily okay so you remember there are 10 batches right today we are 12 batches which have been uh, six batches have graduated six are ongoing if everybody is going to uh, ping all the leadership team or the instructor team the number of messages it's going to get so i'm going to get detail into it let's start with zoom please get comfortable using this platform it could be zoom or google meet or webex most of it they function typically and if you get comfortable with it during the interview time they can see the professionalism in using it real name professional photo is a must there is this is a virtual classroom therefore appropriate classroom behavior is required just because you are virtual it doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want basic things like courtesy politeness respectfulness as you are uh, done in the in person is required to be demonstrated even in online log on to your classroom from a distract free quiet environment we have already discussed quiet audio on mute and video on mute until you are required 
Use your headset with an external mic for best hearing and speaking. Close unneeded application so that unnecessarily the pop-up keeps coming. Imagine if I keep my Slack on, unnecessarily it will keep coming here and it'll get distracted. If you'd like to speak or answer a question, use raise a hand. I see this practice used by few people. Very good. I think that's the right way to do it. Okay. When you are speaking, let others know that you are finished by saying that's all because you are online. And if your video is not on, we don't even know we are going to continue. So it's very important. You conclude by saying back to you. Thank you so much. This is what I wanted to share. Thank you. I'm done. And all these are the habits that you will develop and suddenly on the interview day or in the office, it will not come. If you'd like to use the chat box, remember it is public and record of the chat box is kept and archived. Keep a paper and pen and pencil handy always. Imagine that you're attending a, a, a session with your IA and, and, and you have a doubt and he sees you taking down a, no, a notepad and writing it down. His own commitment goes up because you are taking it as seriously. Write proper pen and take a note down. Make sure you have a webcam and when it is to be used, mindful of your background, lighting, the way you are seated, it's very important that you take care about it. Please take care of your personal needs. We have already talked about it. Do not use inappropriate language. Leave the meeting when the session is finished. Some people don't switch off. They keep talking and others can hear it. Once in a while, by a mistake, it's okay. But if it is periodically happening, you're not adhering to it. Friends, Zoom, Google Meet, WebEx, that is where you're going to live. Most of the time, you will be spending on projects, connecting with people on Zoom or any of these platforms. So get comfortable. The next one is Slack, right? I started using Slack only after joining Masai School. And then I asked Pratik, what is Slack? He said, it's a WhatsApp for the techies. Absolutely, right? But it needs to be used, not like the way that we use there. It has to be used professionally. People love Slack because it's clear boundary between work related. Unlike an email, you will get a lot of spam. Whereas Slack is completely work related, right? So how do we use it? It was designed to establish a clear boundary. But somehow some people are not doing that. They discuss unnecessary stuff, right? So what are the few of the good practices I'm going to cover here? Uh, here we go. First and foremost, basic etiquettes of Slack. Whenever someone has assigned you a task, acknowledge it immediately. People don't acknowledge at all. It is what, see, Slack is like an office, right? Imagine if somebody would have come to your cabin and say, Yogesh, I want this file to be completed. What, how would it happen that you don't even react to it? Right? Please acknowledge it immediately. If someone has asked for an update, please acknowledge it immediately. If you're busy, mention that you will revert after some time or you turn off the notification. Don't leave a conversation without informing, especially in channels. If you won't be available to chat or don't want to be disturbed, make sure the status is done that way. Before sending a direct message to someone, make sure to check the status. This is something that I didn't know. I learned it from Rupul. Rupul says that he puts there offline or whatever it is, people keep sending him message. People keep sending him the message. Please keep it and send it later. If the person hasn't replied immediately, don't bombard them with more messages. Don't assign tasks to people when they are offline. Don't use at if the matter is not urgent because most users get push notification when you at tag them. Don't use public channel for personal conversation. Don't criticize teammates in public channel. Do it via DM. In fact, you should not criticize any of these channels. Do not take Slack, do take Slack conversation to email, phone or face-to-face -face when required. Don't keep doing it again and again. And most important is what is most annoying is people start the chat with Slack like, hi, enter. I want to talk to you, enter. Uh, discussion is about uh, uh, DS algo, enter. So annoying, never do that. It is not a proper etiquette at all. First type the entire stuff, what you want to do and send it at one go. 
right? Because you say hi, and we'll keep looking at it. It'll come. What is the other person is going to send? And nothing happens because that person gets busy with something else. Again, one more. Don't keep entering it as it keeps popping up, right? It's very, very disturbing, especially if you're doing some serious work. Slack channels have become a representation of your company culture and your personality. Keeping a few etiquettes in mind will definitely show you in the good light. So I think this is great if you learn it at Masai School and you are from day one, you are ready to demonstrate this. Your other classmates would be coming without these etiquettes, but here at Masai School, you would have learned already and is the right way to learn it. So we are going to revisit all this and we are going to give you some inputs if, if we see that you are not adhering to it. Okay, so the next one is email etiquettes. When you send an email to an instructor, teaching assistant, classmate, my God, the kind of emails that we receive, no subject line, no, no greetings, no tail, nothing. Disaster. Absolute disaster the way the emails are written, right? A clear descriptive, descriptive subject line is should be there. Be very brief. Don't write too long a mail. Nobody has time to read it. The third aspect is very clearly may not be read in the end. Avoid attachment unless the recipient can open them. Sign your message with your name, email, address, right? Of course, email address could be there. Name and telephone number or a batch. I'm not attending the class today. I need two days off. Which batch? We have 350 students studying with us, right? So please make sure that it is absolutely right and do not type reply all to all of them because it is going to be very, very difficult to read, okay? So what I'm going to do is, uh, before we see this nice video, what I have I've discussed with you friends? The entire genesis is based on the inputs that we got from the instructors, IAs, uh, and also from some of the placement team members, also from some of the HR saying that not acceptable the way your students have written to us. That is where we said that we'll have an etiquette session, an etiquette, it is nothing but the basic courtesy, politeness, the discipline that you need to adhere in this connected world. We covered three large buckets. We covered on Slack, we covered on Zoom, we covered on the email. Before going to that, we generally gave you ABC of netiquettes, what is acceptable behavior in Masai school, right? Now let us look at this video. I found it very interesting. Okay. This is enacted in Miami school by three students of communication. Uh, it's amazing. I liked it. I'm sure you'll all like it. Just confirm that if you can hear it, if you have a challenge, let me know. Three minute video. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to the virtual college at Miami Dade College. This presentation is an overview of the do's and don'ts of internet etiquette, or netiquette. In general, your behavior in the online classroom should be similar to your behavior in face-to-face -face 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 classroom. classroom. The virtual college at Miami Days is, is, is extremely committed to fostering a climate of respect and consideration. Remember, you are dealing with real people being polite and respectful is not only common sense, it is absolutely essential for a productive and supportive online environment. In a positive online environment, you will feel valued by your instructor and your classmates and your own work will have greater value as well. Now, let's take a look at the two major areas of communication netiquette. First, we have writing rules. This applies to email assignments and discussions in your online course. Don't write in capital letters. It is considered a form of shouting. Also, avoid all lowercase letters. The pronoun I should always be capitalized. Use proper grammar and spelling. What's up? What's up? You mean what's up? Online courses require the same high standards of college level writing as face to face courses. Keep it short. Professor, I am so, so sorry that I could not turn that assignment last night, but you must understand that when I got home, my goldfish, Willie, took my car. Keep and it I short. Make the message thorough but concise and to the point. 
Messages are very much like telephone conversations. The clearer the communication and the shorter, the better. Avoid abbreviations. The age of instant messaging, IM, has created a need of abbreviation use in order to save keystrokes. However, an online course is not an IM conversation with friends. <laughs> Avoid quoting in your replies. Students often reply to an email by including a complete copy of the original with a short comment like, I agree. Or, OK. The correct way to use quoting is to include enough material in the quote to make your comment relevant to the reader. Respect threads. Your instructor creates discussion topics and provides directions. You may post a reply to the topic or reply to a posting. When replying to a posting, the right thing to do is to reply to that message. The wrong thing to do is to start a new message. This, this breaks the link. link. Call the thread. Between the original message. And your response. Without that link, it will be difficult for the others in the course to follow the sequence of messages. Now, let's look at our second major area. Respect for others. Respect for others is the second main aspect of good communication etiquette. Here are the important ways that you can show respect for others in the course. Avoid sarcasm. That was a really clever response that you posted on the discussion board. Thank you. The nonverbal cues that provide the context for sarcasm are missing in an online classroom. Making it possible for your message to be misinterpreted. Idiot. Don't criticize or publicly humiliate others. This is known as flaming. And it is considered to be in very bad form. Address your communications and use appropriate salutations. Always address your communications by indicating who it is directed to. Communication software often makes it difficult to determine who is the intended receiver. If it is for a fellow student, use his or her first name. John or Hi John. Do not call your instructor by his or her first name only. Hi Mary. Unless your instructor says it's okay. Hi, Hi Kubrick. <sighs> do not call your instructor by his or her last name only as well. Be polite. Use professor. Never use profanity <gasps> in any communication. This is, after all, a public area. And using profanity is just not an acceptable behavior online or in person. Just, just don't, don't do it. it. Well, that's all. If you follow these simple rules of Communication, communication etiquette. etiquette. Your experience online at Miami-Dade Virtual College will be meaningful, interesting, enriching, and, and fun. fun. Good luck and enjoy, enjoy your, your course. course. Yes, so that was from Miami College. I found it by thing. Yes, Bargo Ready said definitely it is learnable. I hope that was the summary uh, of what we covered uh, so far in today's session so before we hello wind up, and well uh the many things i've just covered few of it when you go to your office the way you shake your hand the way you sit down and have your food with your colleagues the way you dress the way you introduce yourself all the postures all these have an impact the way people perceive you and the way impressions are being formed so it is our attempt to make you all ready as we have been telling you, we want to build you holistically. Tech skills are always there. We want to build your communication skills and career skills. All three put together, nobody can stop you in achieving your goals. Okay, so just a couple of closing slides. So most of you are coming here to have a transformation, right? So this depicts the way in which people come to Maasai school with no coding background, come from different uh, uh, parts of the country. We are extremely proud. In fact, for Samurai, we had people coming from 20 states. Uh, I have told uh, Tasneem that one day we should tell that we have a representation from every state in the country, every union territory. Uh, I would be extremely uh, happy about it. So during this 30 weeks, you go through and we have seen transformation happening. 
but any knowledge we have given you a lot of knowledge today right is without application it's like a book that is never read so many people absorb it but they don't apply it if you don't apply this transformation will never happen we can't apply for you you have to apply for yourself so most people i'm sure without even taking a poll i know that you have accepted the principle that we have shared whether it is slack email or uh the zoom right but you resist in practice because you think chalta hai dekh lenge sochenge karenge ah that is little not for me i am different what we are helping you is with best practices so please do this and when you do this it will be very useful right so this is a transformation uh, that you are moving from uh, from this to there and this entire journey is going to help you in going there and that is what we are attempting to do this i started this session with this quote we are what we repeatedly we do excellence is then is not an act but a habit so we want all of you to cultivate this habit at masai school it's all about the netiquettes that we have shared hope that uh, we have added value to you so good habits make great careers so shruti is available for you to help you out in implementation of this shruti is part of uh, the placement team and uh, she's going to work with the curriculum team and help you all in build this etiquettes because ultimately etiquettes to build takes time if you have any queries on any of these or any support is required on this we are always helpful so thank you so much uh, for this session i think i exceeded by few minutes uh, look forward for getting a shorter uh, messages from instructor ias and coaches if i ask them if you have seen uh, any any uh, uh, differences in the etiquettes okay thank you so much and uh, back to you nrupul if you got to say something and you want to close this session and uh, look forward and thanks for this opportunity Yes, Yogesh. I think you covered most of the things. Yeah, I think also the one thing like everybody should understand is when you are messaging senior people, especially like like me, Yogesh, or or it takes some time to respond. Okay, <laughs> because we have a lot more people to. Yesterday, some person called and 